uh, from UMass Amherst. Happy to present joint work with my colleagues at Duke and Colgate. Um, so our work is focused on a setting um, uh, in the Census Bureau. So uh, statistical agencies like the Census Bureau collect data from individuals and compute population statistics. Uh, an example of a population statistic might be the number of senior citizens in a certain county, also the number of school-age children in a school district, number of voting age speakers in a voting district, and that's typically enumerated for every voting district, every school district. So the Census Bureau is mandated to protect privacy, and although these population statistics are aggregate counts of population, the Census Bureau releases so many of these statistics, and we now know that releasing many statistics about a database can permit it to be reconstructed. Um, the Census Bureau therefore has to impose some privacy protection methodology on the release of these statistics. So those statistics get distorted and inaccuracy uh, results to some degree. And the focus of our work is on downstream impacts of that inaccuracy. In particular, a class of problems that we call in the paper assignment problems, where some resource or benefit is granted to a group uh, and the statistics are an input to that decision. Uh, that assignment rule needs the statistics to make the allocation. So funding allocation is one uh, prime example. There's a pot of money that's going to be granted or distributed proportionally to geographic districts, school districts maybe, and that money needs to be um, divided, and, and, and so any distortion in the, in the population counts is going to affect funding. Another example is voting rights benefits. So in the U.S., there are laws that protect um, so-called minority language groups, and there's a threshold test. If there are enough speakers of that language in a voting district, they qualify for benefits, which basically involve publishing voting materials in that language so that uh, voters are not disenfranchised. So naturally, there's a difficult balance between privacy and accuracy, and inaccuracy in these population counts can have serious impact. We have to accept some degree of inaccuracy if we're going to protect privacy. But the central question that we're trying to answer here is, do, effects, do certain groups um, bear the impacts of inaccuracy more than others? Now, most of the setup that I've given you so far is actually not new. The Census Bureau has been doing everything I described for many decades. But one thing that is new is that they're, they're um, revising their privacy protection method methodology and they're starting to adopt differential privacy for some of the population statistics they release. So differential privacy is a formal model of privacy. Um, noise is added to the counts to protect privacy. And there's a parameter, epsilon, that controls the strength of the privacy guarantee. And stronger privacy means more noise. Importantly, uh, differential privacy supports transparency by allowing that description of the algorithm, and in many cases, the description of the noise distribution that is being used to be analyzed outside of the domain that applies the privacy mechanism. So outside the Census Bureau, we now have ability to study more readily the effects of, of the privacy mechanism. Census Bureau has already started to make public some of their algorithm uh, descriptions and parameters. <clears throat> okay, so in the paper, you'll find that we studied empirically three uh, of these assignment problems that I mentioned, educational funding, so-called Title I funds in, in, in the US, if, if you're familiar with that term, these voting rights benefits, and also congressional apportionment. We tried a couple of uh, differentially private algorithms, both sort of standard commonplace algorithms and more advanced algorithms that have appeared in the literature. And we ran the simulation on 2010 public use data, uh, which is tr treated as ground truth. So um, to give you some highlights of, of what we found, we found that significant disparities can arise, particularly when the strength of the privacy guarantee is stronger and therefore more noise is added. So in the educational funding case, one of the things we, effects we found is that smaller districts tend to get an inflated allocation of funds, which is in some sense compensated or paid for by larger districts getting taxed a little bit. Those effects can be very small if the privacy uh, uh, parameter is high, which means less privacy, but they can be very dramatic 
if, uh, with stronger privacy. In the voting rights case, the measures were a little bit different. We're concerned with voting districts that um, have a very low likelihood of getting classified correctly. And, and the worst case is when they, there's a district that deserves the benefits and gets misclassified and loses the benefits. And so what you find are disparities like some districts being classified with almost 100% probability correctly, and then other districts maybe less than half the time uh, classified correctly under, under random trials uh, of the privacy mechanism. So um, there's, the Census Bureau has difficult decisions to make when it comes to balancing privacy and accuracy. And these are social choices that they make carefully. I think one of the key takeaways from our work that, that's impacted my re research is that notions of privacy um, have been a little bit simplistic. And we haven't realized in the data privacy algorithmic community that we've been optimizing certain, for certain metrics. So even, even once you pick a place on the privacy spectrum, let's say, you decide that I'm willing to tolerate this amount of privacy loss, there's a huge design space of differentially private algorithms that can meet that criterion. And the research community works very hard at optimizing error for given levels of privacy. But what they've been doing is primarily optimizing aggregate error, which can be seen as a utilitarian goal. In, in the funding example, it would, it would equate to minimizing like the total funding misallocation across all districts, which, which is a reasonable goal, but it's a different goal than the egalitarian goal, which would be to minimize like how, how um, misallocated the worst district uh, is. So, um, so this is an important distinction to make, and I think we need to do algorithm design that takes into account both of these metrics. Okay, in terms of remedies, how can we fix this? There's a lot to say here, um, and there's perhaps many places in this picture, in this workflow, where remedies could potentially uh, fit. Um, in the paper, we make a start at remedying some of these, um, some of these problems, and because we're algorithm designers, what we, what we addressed was um, trying to fix the algorithms you know, after they, you know, the, the assignment rules. So you'll notice that in the way I've presented this, the assignment rules treat the re data released by the census as if it is sort of true, um, even though they know that, that there could be errors in this data. So we can design um, re refined or redesigned assignment rules that take into account the noise introduced by the privacy uh, uh, algorithm, and to give you one sort of highlight result, if we wanted to make sure that no districts are underfunded, no district loses funding, we could, with high probability, we could do that by over-allocating by 8%, let's say, for a certain epsilon value. And then, although districts would get different amounts of funding, no one would fall below their rightfully deserved funding with high probability. Thank you. If you'd like to uh, learn more, there's resources on the slide.